The president has guaranteed that the exchanges will be. And that's today's Talk Money Tip. For Eagle Radio, I'm Jeffrey Shank. And it's the morning show here at Eagle Radio. Good morning, 8.35 on a Monday, the last day of September. A couple weeks back in the city of uh, Lawrence and throughout the state, there was the nat- country, there was the national night out. But in the city of Lawrence in particular, they had a specific national night out event that happened at the uh, Abishara Boathouse. And I had the privilege of meeting some members of the Guardian Angels. I was unaware that they were serving in the city of Lawrence. So I thought it might be nice to... Uh, and informative to chat with Sniper. Sniper is the Massachusetts Regional Coordinator of the Guardian Angels. We uh, refer to his street name. Uh, you know, just out of concern for him and and uh, friends and family. Often the Guardian Angels, when they're out on the streets, they use street names so that when they have to deal with the bad guys, the bad guys don't turn around and seek vengeance. Sniper, thanks for joining us here at Eagle Radio. Good morning, and we appreciate you being a part of the broadcast. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Let's uh, first ask you to tell us a little bit about the Guardian Angels for those listeners who are unfamiliar. The Angels have been around for some four decades now, I think. Uh, tell us uh, the, the history that you you know of, of the Guardian Angels. When did they first uh, become formed, and what has what is their actual goal? Curtis Lee was started the Guardian Angels back in February 13, 1979. He was a restaurant manager in the Bronx, tired of all the slime and grime in New York City. And he got a few members together that he knew, uh, some co-workers, and they went out and they started cleaning up subways and alleyways and riding the subways, the A-Train, the Mugger Express. And they're, they're the ones that kind of started the first transit authorities, the transit police system out there. And they were making a huge impact, and now they have grown. The Guardian Angels, the alliance of the Guardian Angels, have grown 150 cities worldwide, including Japan and Europe. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. I met Curtis uh, some years ago in Florida. Um, I started with the Guardian Angels in Florida back in 2004. Grew with the Guardian Angels as a gang unit commander hitting gang neighborhoods and moved up here to Massachusetts where Curtis asked me to start the Boston chapter in November of 2011. In March of 2013, we started the Lawrence chapter. Basically, the Guardian Angels are unarmed, volunteer, crime-fighting task force. We go into neighborhoods, streets, subways, even the Internet to, to fight cyber bullies. Um, our goal and purpose is to provide peaceful solutions to safeguard neighborhoods, schools, cyberspace from bullying, gangs, violence, empower individuals, especially our youth lead a safe and positive life. Sniper, Lou Blassie here. I, I remember stories uh, going back a decade or more. Uh, every once in a while a story would crop up where local communities would be leery and m- even local police departments would be leery about the, the guardian angels coming in. Don't hear these stories anymore. Have you guys gotten better and, and developed better relationships with communities and police departments? It, it seems to be pretty widely accepted nowadays. Yes, it has. Uh, back when the guardian angels first started they thought they were vigilante they didn't think it was going to work they were mixed races and and different backgrounds and they just thought they were another street gang um we've taken a different approach you know we've been in the making for over 34 years 150 cities world worldwide hitting newspapers and uh, newscasts uh we try to go into a city and not take over the city as our intent we don't have that intent at all we go into the city and, and say to the mayor and to the police chief, we're here to help you. We're here to give you extra eyes and, the, and ears on the streets and in the subways and in, in the neighborhoods and the community. We try to build that rapport with the, um, the, the town's people, the leaders, um, the assistant chiefs, the, uh, the um, sergeants and the lieutenants and captains of the road patrols that are out there on the front line fighting these crimes and saying, hey, we're not here to replace your job. We're not here to get government grants. We're here just to be volunteers. You know, we've, we're tired of serving in schools and libraries and hospitals. We feel more comfortable serving out here on the streets. Um, this is a, an act of service, a volunteer of giving back to the community. And so they have now respected that, and we, we, we go into the neighborhood with respect. Even to the gangbangers on the street corner, we go up to them with respect and let them know, hey, we're the good guys on the neighborhood. We're here to protect your sister, your mother, your brother, 
and your neighbors, you know, take this nonsense somewhere else. So we've built a, a huge respect over the last 34 years. If you're just joining us here on The Morning Show, good morning. I'm Jim, and that's Lou, and we're chatting with Sniper. He is the Massachusetts Regional Coordinator of the Guardian Angels. Uh, they do have a chapter here in the area. Uh, Sniper, tell us, is the chapter uh, specific to Lawrence, or are there members elsewhere throughout the Merrimack Valley? There are members throughout the Merrimack Valley. Uh, we have a chapter in Boston serving Cambridge and Dorchester, um, as well as throughout the MBTA subway system. Um, we have a chapter in Lawrence covering Haverhill, Methuen, um, Andover. Most of our Lawrence chapter is covering Lawrence right now until we grow. We are seeking guardian angel recruitment right now. Um, we have a toll-free number, one eight seven 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 eight one eight nine eight six. We're always looking for recruits. We train you. You don't need to come to the table with anything. No experience needed. You just have to have a good, caring heart. We are growing here in Lawrence and trying to build a Lawrence chapter up to be 20 members wide so we can stretch out and hit the, the following areas as well. You led me to my next question. Uh, nicely, I was wondering who the guardian angels are. Tell me about a typical guardian angel and tell me about his path to becoming one. What kind of training are we talking about? Because I'm guessing it, it, this isn't a neighborhood watch. You just don't put people out patrolling the streets. You, you have to educate them a little bit on how to handle themselves out there. So tell me a little bit about who the guardian angels are, where they typically come from, and what their path is to uh, wearing the beret. Well, they come from all kinds of lives. We have nurses, we have doctors, we have um, police officers, retired police officers. Um, we have security officers, we have custodians. Um, they come from all different walks of life. We have people that are going through phases right now where they don't have a job and they just need to get out of the house. They're going stir crazy. Uh, we have people that are students, um, high school students, college students. We just recruited... Um, a young man from National Night Out who didn't know who we were and came up to us, asked us who we were and what we were about. He's 17 years old. He joined the Guardian Angels two weeks later. He called the, the 1877 number, 781-8986. He called that number, and we met with him. Um, and let me tell you about one of my recruits. His, name, his street name is Easy. He, he joined the Guardian Angels because he wanted to make a difference in Lawrence. He's a natural, born citizen of the uh, Lawrence area. He tired of all the slime and grime in Lawrence, and he has a family. And he wanted to make a difference, and he knew about the Guardian Angels through martial arts and through other uh, people in his life in other countries. And they told him, hey, seek out New York. That's where it all started. And New York seeked out me in Boston. He came out to Boston and did 12 weeks of training. After that, we came into Lawrence, because that's where his heart was, and we started the chapter, and I made him the second in command. He has a heart for Lawrence and wants Lawrence to be cleaner and better for not just him and his children, but for his neighbors and his friends and people that he doesn't even know. Those are the type of people that want to make a difference. That's what we're looking for, somebody who doesn't mind working along the side of law enforcement and not being afraid to learn how to call 911 and report a crime or to deter a crime. If you're just joining us, good morning. We are chatting with Sniper. He is the Massachusetts Regional Coordinator of the Guardian Angels, and he's joining us today to talk about uh, how they're helping to to diminish crime in the community. Uh, Sniper, let me ask you about this. What is a, a typical night for a Guardian Angel? You're out on the streets, say, of the city of Lawrence. What do they go through? What's, what's the uh, Take us through a couple of hours in the evening. Sure. Sometimes our foot patrols will be down, going down maybe uh, South Union Street, and there might not be anything in our sight, but that didn't mean we didn't deter some crime from happening. There might be somebody lurking in, in the trees and bushes or getting ready to break into something or to sell dope on the street corner, um, some gangbangers hanging out on a corner. It, we might not have to put our hands or do anything that night, but that didn't mean we didn't deter crime from happening. Some nights we have it all heck breaks loose. You know, we have fist fights on this corner between two rival gangs, or we got a uh, fist fight going across the street at a neighborhood bar in an alleyway. Uh, we got thugs being swinged on this corner, and we walk up and we take over the corner, and they, they, they run, they disappear. 
Um, this corner, we might be reporting crime and uh, in action and letting them know that there's some uh, drag car racing going up and down these streets, that somebody's going to get hit. There's kids out here on bicycles, and we're out there calling 911 and saying, hey, you, you know, there's some dangerous elements out here. Um, different nights, different things take place. Um, and like I said, a good night might be a night that we don't even see anything or do anything, but that didn't mean we didn't deter anything. Sniper, thank you very much for, for joining us, and hopefully throughout the remainder of the year and in the future, if there's anything we can do here at the radio station to help help assist the Guardian Angels, please let us know. I want to remind our listeners they can learn more if they log on to guardianangels.org uh, or, as you've referenced, the phone number 877-781-8986. I thank you for joining us so early in the morning. Thanks, Sniper. Well, thank you for having us. Um, we're, we're an organization that dares to care and want to make a difference in Lawrence. So if you want to join a local crime-fighting volunteer organization and learn free self-defense and first aid and make a difference, please call us. Um, we can look us up online or call the toll-free number, one 781 8986 Thank you, Jim, for having us on your radio show, and look forward to talking with you again. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the Sniper joining us today from the Guardian Angels. They do, a, they do some good work, Lou. Twelve weeks of training. That's and he was just talking about, you know, a little, little first aid and some self-defense in there, too. That would be good. Yeah. I wouldn't mind helping out my community. It's 845 here on a Monday. Have you ever find... seen a guardian angel? I saw them. I saw. Well, you mean uh, just in general? No. I've seen them in Patron. Boston. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen several in Boston walking around. I, I, it's amazing how low key they get the job done. I mean, they've been in ha- the chapter deals with Haverhill yeah. and Methuen and Lawrence and. Well, as he mentioned, it's it's really the deterrent. If you know, if gangs know that there are angels walking right. in that neighborhood, they're going to be less likely to commit a crime. They don't want you know the air of enforcement, which we talked about in the city of Lawrence. Exactly, right. and they can certainly assist the city if Lawrence needs all the help they can get. Let's find out what's happening on the roads. Miss Natalie is joining us today, and then we'll take that forecast with Mike Ellis. Morning, Natalie. It's a busy Monday morning commute to a crash 495 North. This one's blocking the right lane between West.